Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Moon. The Garage Gym Athlete Podcast is a result of my desire to build better humans, unequivocal coaches, and autonomous athletes. I've spent the last several years obsessing over program design, nutrition, and every other way you can optimize human performance. This podcast distills the latest scientific research with what I've learned and blends it with the not-so-scientific field of mental toughness. We are here to build you into a dangerously effective athlete. If you enjoy this podcast, you can find out more about our training at garagegymathlete.com. And if you want to pursue more into the field of coaching and programming, head to endof3fitness.com. Thanks for listening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jerry Moon here with Kyle Shrum, Ashley Hicks, and Joe Courtney. Everyone has their names proper on Zoom, so when I read them, I have to read them. I, it's a lot to try and memorize three different names. So. We're going to have a Ron Burgundy moment next week. Well, I did it last week. Ashley yeah. put Chocolate Lover or something like that. And the week before, I was like Recoverer, Better Recoverer or something. I think I ignored that one because I didn't know how to read it. It wasn't a word. <laughs> It had a hyphen and stuff. It was just weird. Did we start recording? Let's, uh, I'll, we did. I'll get back to the podcast. No. Um, well, I actually want to start with updates, see how everyone's doing. We're, we're recording this right at the end of January, beginning of February, daily over decades going strong. If you want to be a part of the challenge, go to dailyoverdecades.com. Uh, that's probably the last time I'll say it. I think we'll still be giving updates, but I'm not going to, we're not going to have the sign up page up forever. My plan was to kind of leave it up for January. Uh, so people can get involved. You absolutely can do the daily over decades challenge at any point in time. And I would recommend it. Or if you fall off the the wagon, get back on the wagon, whatever, you know, keep going. Um, but we do have a lot of rewards being given at the end of this one. So I have to cut off the sign up and all that stuff. So let's get into it. Ashley, how's your daily over decades challenge going and, and how does it make you feel? Oh, phenomenal. It's going great going to crush those 200 sessions. I don't know if I'll quite make the 300, but, um, good job. I mean, it's the calories are being met. The minutes are being met. How's it make me feel accomplished? You're on track to hit 300 or close to it, right? Kind of yeah. ish. I'm not like Jared moon on track. I'm Kyle on track. <laughs> you're, not, you're not Joe on, track. you're not Joe on track either. So <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah. I'll let the listener will infer which each of those mean. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I'm on day 24. I did today's workout. Whoo, y'all, the legs are already wobbly after today's workout. So for January, you're ending with 24? 24. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and you only needed one extra to meet the average, right? 25 sure. per month. You're, right. I think you're going to get it. Yeah. We'll see. You'll get there. Yeah. All right. Joe. <laughs> so. Joe on track is <laughs> by the end of today, I'll be at 18, Oof, which is seven shy of what I need to be per month. So uh, that's that a hard travel, catch up, man. <laughs> that week of travel really dug me a hole. Um, I'm feeling good though. Like on track, I, I even, because I knew I was, I was getting behind, I moved up my Monday workout to Sunday. So I'm already a day into this week of workouts or if Chris Morgan had his way, I'm actually a day behind. So because he starts the week on Saturdays, but <clears throat> I'm feeling good. I mean, my, my recovery has been great. The uh, gym here is fantastic. So I'm glad to, to have that. Uh, I'm going to have another week of travel coming up. So I'm going to figure out what I'm going to need to do on the road, but feeling good still uh, recovery has been awesome. Everything's been feeling good. Uh, I just need to actually get it done. So yeah, I'll be eight at 18 at the end of today. Um, and I was doing the math out and it's, it's actually was saying how good she felt. I'm just like, I'm feeling stressed now because like, okay, I'm, I'm seven in the hole. That's also, a hard hold. You, like, I'm not going to do the math for you, but it's not fun math. No. Oh yeah. Because, um, <laughs> so for the year I have 65 days where I don't do anything. I've already used like 12 of those days. So I need to have a yeah. few seven workout weeks, um, Again, this week of travel is going to make it hard. So if, even if I get four while I'm on the road, on the road trip, that'll be an accomplishment, but I'm still going to be in the hole. But after that, I'm going to have to like do seven. I'm going to have to do almost every day for, uh, for a little bit. So 
March will definitely be a huge, I think all I'm going to try and do it. Uh, Jared did for January and basically try and hit every single day in March because that'll be, you know, five days extra. And then <laughs> it's also, uh, when you, you have to do 12, 25 days per month, but then you realize February, there's only 28 days in the month. Right. So it's a busy right, month. That's, that's yeah. You got to do all of February and you only get, you only make up three days. Yeah. So that's just, that's just that. So two months. You do all of February like, well, this sucks. and all of March and you made up your seven days. Yeah. We'll see. Plus one. I'll, I'll go for March because our gym equipment should be here. Half of our gym equipment should be here by the end of this week. We'll go on the road. We'll come back a couple of weeks later. Who knows when the other stuff that I was coming from Bahrain will be here, but at least I'll have a squat rack. So when's the baby do? I don't know. She's doing some life planning math now. <laughs> uh, April she's 1st, just like, very... she basically just said your chance of doing the 300 or zero. <laughs> <laughs> that's also why i said march i need to make up because then after that who knows it's gonna happen i don't know uh very beginning of april april 1st okay april fool's day yeah. yep so we won't know if he's faking us out we'll just yeah. ignore any messages we get about a baby being not... had you guys have not seen liz so you don't know if she's baby pumping the whole thing could be a joke yeah that's true yeah. if she's baby pumping <laughs> if this is some elaborate prank like he I'm would go just... down in history that would be <laughs> like freaking legend, man. Like I wouldn't even be mad. I would want my, I'd want my baby gifts back though. <laughs> well, I did put books and uh, kitchen stuff on the baby registry. So just saying. <laughs> All right. Kyle. Uh, you just want cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am at 24 out of 300 um so today we'll make 25 i will be on track perfectly on track for the monthly average of Rub 25 days per month um so yeah perfection you know one level of perfection oh my know? gosh it's just how it goes um i'm feeling i'm feeling great um really loving the doms and started started doing some yoga last week man yoga one, hold on it was one of my sessions, did, did some yoga. Um, you know, we're not going to distinguish what it, type of yoga it was. Videos um, for the community. So, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, a, it's a, it's been rumored, but we'll see how that works out. It won't work and out. Silkies. Um, <laughs> anyway, I actually think certain people in the community, Kyle Hayes camp <laughs> basically is who I'm thinking of might actually like pay me to do that. If I brought it up to him. So he's wow. the one who sent me the silkies I have. So I don't know. Anyway. In a way, yeah. he did pay you. He already paid you for them. So you, now you have to. Oh, no. Now, now so, I'm obligated to do it. Yeah. No, no. That's, that's contract, I'm not doing contract. that. I'm not doing the <laughs> yoga videos, guys. That's <laughs> no. not happening. I'm not doing that. So anyway, yoga's yoga's happening just for recovery, but recovery sessions. Anyway, for good stuff. everyone that was in our call on Friday. That's, That's where the yoga came from. Yeah. And then, so if you didn't make the first call, you should definitely make the next call because it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So Joe threw in the Facebook group. Um, we did a get together this past Friday over Zoom. Nothing's recorded. It was just like a community hangout and it was really cool. And I'm sure we'll do it more. So if you're not involved in the Facebook group, go get involved and join the next one. It was cool just to catch up and see how everyone was doing on the, the 300 challenge. Uh, or the daily over decades challenge. I'm sorry. It's my 300 challenge. It's other people's <laughs> 200 challenge. Um, so my January went, uh, well, I will train today. We're recording this on the last day of January. Uh, so that'll be 30 out of 31. A little frustrated that I didn't just do that one day when it's 30 out of 31. I would have preferred 31 out of 31. They should have just skipped another day. And I was like, ah, oh, well, it's two days. So that's fine. Yeah. I, that was almost yesterday. I was like, <laughs> mm. um, but I do, I did like learn, care. I don't like training seven days a week. Six, no problem. Same. Seven, for some reason, I'm like, mm -mm. I, I, there's got to be one day where I don't do it. But I'm perfectly fine with six. I, I found that, that to be odd about myself. So that's, that's what I'll be moving to. I'm not trying to like get the most days. Like I, like I was saying earlier, I was just trying to build in some buffer in January just in case something happens. I have some buffer days, a couple of them at least. 
um, moving forward. And I might do that on different months, but February, my plan, I'll hit that 25, uh, but it is a shorter month, right? So I'll only be a couple of days off. Um, but then my plan is just six a week after that, maybe one other buffer month where I try to get every day of the month, but that'll be about it. I do not enjoy seven days per week. That is for sure. But other than that, everything's on track and, and I'm liking it. So good stuff. All right, get into this study. I think that the community would find this study very interesting. Um, we talk a lot about intermittent fasting, time-restricted eating, feeding, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the name of the study is 12 months of time-restricted eating and resistance training improves inflammatory markers and cardiometabolic risk factors. Uh, so this is the first long-term one-year study of time-restricted eating, AKA intermittent fasting in a lifting population. So as healthy trained men, they were assigned to a TRE pattern or standard eating pattern and both groups ate high protein diets, which is like what I was thinking immediately in my head when I just was like opening the study, I was like, I hope they equated for protein. Um, and they did, and they trained three times a week and they were drinking whey protein after their training sessions. Uh, the main reason they did it, the author stated they aim to examine the effects of long-term 12-month TRE pattern on body composition, metabolic, and cardiovascular risk markers. So very interesting, we, and, and I think we need to stay focused on what they were after in doing the study. They were really looking at health. They were looking at yeah. your health in doing time-restricted uh, eating, which I think is also another cool thing. Um so it was a pretty standard um, breakdown. I'll just read how it went. The experiment was a single blind randomized study. 20 healthy subjects were enrolled and underwent 12 months of either a time-restricted diet or normal diet protocol along with resistance training. In the TRE protocol, subjects consumed their energy needs in three meals during an eight-hour period of time each day, 1 p.m., 4 p.m., and 8 p.m. Subjects in the ND group, which is the normal diet group, also had three meals, which were consumed at 8 a.m., 1 p.m., and 8 p.m. Uh, groups were matched for calories consumed and macronutrient distribution at baseline. Uh, and I'll just jump straight to the kind of takeaway. Um, and it's not that uncommon if you've been doing uh, intermittent fasting. The TRE group ended up eating less calories. Mm -hmm. um, about 7% reduction in total calorie intake, but that wasn't like part of the study. This just happened naturally. Right. But they also had a lot of all of their like inflammatory markers, insulin sensitivity, lipid profiles, uh, all of it was better improved in the time restricted feeding. So the intermittent fasting window. So we're talking about health, inflammatory markers, cardiovascular markers, all like lipid profiles, all these things were great. They were, they improved, um, and I guess they weren't really that big of a difference in the, um, normal diet. Um, let's see, trying to no adverse events were reported and, uh, body mass, fat mass index, insulin, like growth factor one and test testosterone were significantly lower compared with the normal diet. So it's kind of like you do have your which one do you want more? You know, so mm -hmm. there are, were some things that were reduced in doing the time restricted, uh, eating window. Um, we can, we can tease this out a little bit, talk about a little bit more. Um, I kind of have like how you should look at this study. It's not, I don't think that was necessarily good or bad for time restricted feeding. I mean, I think it was primarily good, but I think it depends on which camp you are in and what you need to achieve, um, and how much you should use it are going to kind of be my takeaways. Uh, but what did you guys think about this, this study on intermittent fasting? I really like this one, especially because of the duration, because they had them training three times a week was great. Um, it was the fact that it was originally structured for an eight week study where they met with a dietitian every week, but then they were like, Hey, you want to just continue this for the rest of the 10 months? And they did. And it was awesome. And like, while they had some dropout, they still had, uh, I think 10 people on each side of so 20 people that stuck with it. So that was really awesome. Um, I also liked when they, that they lined out the training time. So instead of like, they all train between like four and 6 PM. So they were both not fasted when they train, but the fasted people, um, just move their breakfast up or move their breakfast back. So it wasn't like a, okay, these people are training fast. These people are not, it's these people just have a long fasting window, but they're still training after having uh, breakfast and lunch. So the calories for the day were the same, 
uh, but they just had a longer fasting window. So it's, it's cool to see the difference between, because the first eight weeks were, had, had one conclusion. And then after that, the, the, for, the, the, for the year, they had even more of a conclusion um, or a different conclusion. So because the time-restricted feeding I get, just takes longer for it to have its effect. So it was really cool to see. Um, let's see. I think for my main takeaway, if I just skip to that, is that fasting and time-restricted feeding is good for, for short bursts. So if you want to do it for eight weeks for, or maybe even like, a, like at max a cycle, then do it or just like four to six weeks, do your, do your, uh, fasting, have your training, but then go back to normal because it does have great, it's, you, you do it more for health benefits or like a, um, I, I don't want, I, I hate using the word, a, a, a cut, but like, if you, if you just want to have like a little, a, a little bump in losing some fat, then you might do it for a little bit, but still go back to the normal eating window. But either way, it should be looked at as more of a health thing and to do it in bursts than to do it uh, for, for like a super long time. And I know I did it for a very long time too. And I didn't really notice that much of a difference anyway. And I was working out fasted most of the time, but now I have dialed it back. And now I do anytime I'm lifting pretty much um, I'm eating first, but when I do my run day and then I usually one other, one of my lifting days, usually press day because it's usually less intense for press. I'll do those training sessions fasted, but every other day I'll eat after like when I wake up before I go to the gym, just so I have enough time. So, um, having the occasional fasting is good for you health wise. Uh, so that was my main takeaway is that it should be looked at for health and in short bursts versus this is what I just need to do to lose these, lose the weight and whatnot, because it showed that while the scale might go down, you might be losing muscle mass, not, not just fat mass after a long period of time. Uh, Ashley. So I also like this study. Um, I agree with Joe that it does need to be looked at as a health perspective. Uh, but some of the things that really Jared kind of touched on him was for the TRE group. So the intermittent fasting group, they had improved insulin sensitivity, um, better inflammatory, like less inflammation in their body, uh, had a lower fat mass. Uh, and so I think Two, I think it would be good for someone who is struggling with some sort of cardiovascular or metabolic issues here. Um, now for, again, this is all um, men, if I'm correct in saying that. So for me, well, how I look at this is for females, I wouldn't recommend a 16-8 uh, just because of hormonal things at play. And I would maybe even chat with a doctor before you start going to this, but um, that was my main takeaway. Like if you want to lose some weight and like want to be able to implement something that is something that you can do pretty quickly, intermittent fasting, um, for men is probably a, a, a great thing, a great way to start. Um, and I think it also depends on like where you are at in your health journey too. Like Joe talked about, you know, kind of a shorter burst, but I think too, it also depends on, um, what are your long-term goals with it? And, um, you know, what, what are you trying, what health markers are you trying to improve with fasting? Um, because they, you know, they did it over a longer period, um, and saw, you know, different results than from the eight week period as well. So, um, that was kind of my, my main takeaway for that. Kyle. So I've, I've used intermittent fasting. Actually just kind of, it's just kind of become my normal, my normal go-to uh, way of eating. Um, even going back to um, back when I first joined Grouch athlete and was losing a bunch of weight and all that kind of stuff. So I've just kind of kept it um, for the most part. That's, that's been my default. And um, there have been like, there've been like short bursts where like I changed things up a little bit. Um, and actually, uh, Jared was talking about this recently as well, of uh, like with the daily over decades challenge kind of needing to increase calories a little bit, uh, maybe, maybe taking a look at that and, and eating a little bit more, um, just because of the increased, the increased training volume for the week. Um, so I've been, I've been playing with that a little bit, uh, since the beginning of the year as well. Um, but, uh, time restricted eating is just kind of my, my default. And so they saw the subject saw like a, a, a natural caloric deficit, which is something that when I read that, I was like, that makes sense. Cause that's what happened to me. Um, I kind of went from 
um, I, I don't really like fit like three whole meals into my eating window every day when I'm, when I'm doing time restricted eating, I just kind of, um, I basically just eaten two large meals a day. Um, and so my overall, my calories go down when I'm doing that. Um, so that, that makes a lot of sense to me and, and was something that apparently the researchers didn't factor in before they were actually kind of surprised by that, that they were surprised that they wouldn't eat as much, but I just don't feel, I just don't feel like I need to eat more when I, when I'm eating this way, when this is my normal diet. Um, I just don't feel like I need to eat more. I eat, uh, kind of a big lunch at, you know, to break my fast. And then I eat dinner with the family at the end. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I eat. Um, but anyway, um, uh, I thought it was really good. I really enjoyed the study. Um, it's definitely like, like everyone has said, you need to assess your own goals and, you know, do you want to f- focus on hypertrophy and building muscle? If you want to do that, um, intermittent fasting is probably not for you. If you want to focus more on, on your, your blood markers, which is something that I'm looking at recently as well is just trying to really dial in. I've actually been like, um, checking my blood sugar and stuff over the last couple of weeks, just monitoring that really closely. Uh, you guys know, I've talked a lot about it, about like my struggle with migraines and stuff and it comes and goes and I go through like, I go through periods where I'll have, you know, one or two a week and I'll go through periods where I don't have one for like three months, you know, and it's just kind of, it's kind of really weird. So just, I've just been like, that's been something that I've been doing this month is just like really tracking it like every single day, just trying to make sure. Um, and so I'm personally am more focused like on the, like the health markers as opposed to like um, the hypertrophy and strength and all that kind of stuff. Just trying to make sure that dig into some things specifically that related to those things. But I, I enjoyed the study and enjoyed that it kind of showed different things. It did show that um, actually both groups over the course of the year, the strength was actually their strength uh, numbers at the end were, were not significantly different. They were actually, um, they tested the bench press and the leg press, um, our good old friend, the leg press. Um, but they, especially the bench, the bench press one rep max for both groups was exactly the same. Um, and so the, these guys were still getting stronger. They were still building strength, um, but they just had different body composition over that time. Um, so I, I just think it's, I think both protocols can be, can be very helpful. It, it just depends on what your goals are. Uh, like everything nutrition related, it's, um, it's, it's highly individualized to you as an athlete. Yeah. So when nutrition, like, uh, gurus or whatever, look at time restricted eating, they always point out that it's the only magic in it is calorie reduction. Like, and there's no like, Oh, it's the body taking a break and all these things happen. Cause you're not eating like, uh, the science side of nutritionists hate that. Um, I'm not saying I'm in that camp. Uh, it's just like, they always hate it. They're like, there's nothing special about it. All you're doing is eating less calories. Um, and that's kind of what they're saying here is like, there was this random 7% reduction, but that's what we need most people to do is eat mm. fewer calories. And so if I can just tell you to do a 16, eight, and that magically reduces how many calories you eat. And I didn't tell you to reduce your calories. It's a win, right? It's a win. So I think from a psychological standpoint, um, if you need to lose weight, fasting makes a lot of sense. Uh, I've talked a lot about this recently on the podcast. I tend to overeat, but I especially tend to over, I mean, under eat, under eat when I'm, uh, doing fasting, because if I get busy or whatever's going on in life, all those things are always going to take, uh, priority over me eating. Uh, that's just how I've always been. And so I can get in some really bad, like, did I seriously eat like 1200 calories today? Like I don't have to make up for that. Uh, and so like, I'll get into those States and right now I'm completely abandoning, uh, time restricted feeding, but I've also basically been doing it. I don't know, five to seven years or something yeah. crazy like that. Um, yep. and so I'm, I'm off of it right now. And my plan in the future is just to use it as a tool in certain stints. So, you know, a 30 day window or like Joe say, saying like maybe one cycle, but then always, always cycling back to breakfast, you know, always coming back to just eating some breakfast. Um, because my energy levels are a lot higher when I'm well fed. And if I have to eat breakfast to make sure that I'm well fed, then I'm just going to eat breakfast and it's not going to be that big of a deal. Uh, but for all of our garage gym athletes out there, I think a time restricted feeding can be a really great tool because 
if you're not that concerned with specifically muscle growth, that's about it. Specifically muscle growth. If you're not that concerned, say you want to lose weight, you want to cut a little bit, you, but you don't want to get weaker and you know, you don't want to do anything crazy, then do some time, time restricted feeding. It's like, it has a check mark in every category except for muscle gain. And so, and, and to be honest, if you did equate calories, I wonder what would happen. You know, um, I wonder if there would be any difference, but I think that it's great. If you are a garage gym athlete listening, you want to kind of lose some weight, but you don't want to put a ton of like crap into it, then just do some, do a intermittent fasting window. Like add that if you haven't tried it already, but use it as a tool, right? Um, use it in sparingly. And then I think what Ashley said is really important. Males versus females on this. Yeah, I was, like, I was glad you brought that up. Like, we don't know what the hell, like we, we kind of talked about this in recent podcasts too, like with males and females, like there's not enough research out there, period, dot. But from what I'm seeing, more anecdotally, I don't think females should do long periods of intermittent fasting. Like, I just don't think so. I don't think it's good for them. I think uh, bodies respond differently. And um, right now, I don't think it's a great idea. And if you are doing it, I don't think you should do it for long periods of time at all. And that's for females. And, but I feel the same way for dudes. Like I did it for a long time. I don't think I had any necessarily adverse, um, effects, but I mean, I have basically weighed the exact same for five to seven years while lifting a lot of weight, you know, like maybe mm-hmm. I would have gained more muscle mass. Maybe I would be 195, mm-hmm. 200, something like that right now. If I had just maintained a normal diet instead of intermittent fasting, maybe I'd have more muscle mass. Um, and I don't really care. Like we, we talked about that recently on a podcast too. I don't, I don't care that much, like whatever, but maybe that would be the difference. That's the only thing I could think of. Uh, I don't feel like I had any health, uh, like I said, adverse events having done it as long as I did, but who knows, maybe I missed out on something as opposed to something damning happening. <laughs> yeah. I think when you ha- when you do something for a long time though, too, and it becomes your normal, like your body's adapted to it. And so you get exactly what you said. Like you get to a point where you're maintaining and you're just kind of maintaining a new normal as opposed to like using, like you said, using it as, as a tool for specific, for specific things, whether it's for an event or just for a specific cycle of putting on muscle or something like that. Like you, you need to, you got to shock the system a little bit and change things up in order to really see some progress. So, but that, that's kind of the thing. It got, it got to be a new normal for me and just, I just kind of got comfortable with it, you know, and it was just kind of my, my way of doing things. And so, uh, this is a good reminder just to, to shake things up when you need to. Um, but that's what I wasn't even doing it adults. after like year one, I wasn't doing it for any reason at all, other than yeah. I was just doing it, you yeah. know, it was just, yeah, it was just normal. Like yeah. I wasn't like, Ooh, well, there's all these health benefits. I'm like, I'm getting so healthy. It was just like, it's actually more convenient for me to not eat breakfast. So I'm going to keep doing that <laughs> or yeah. not doing that. Right. That's yeah. the only reason I continued to fast for as long as I did. I wasn't even like trying to get any benefit out of it. It was just, Hey, let's have some coffee and get to work. That's, that's easier for me than, than, uh, eating. So it's a, it's a lazy, lazy approach on my end. Well, and your training schedule changed too. So that's what I was going to maybe ask you. Like if you trained in the morning, would you train fasted or would you have breakfast prior to? So, because there was such a long window of me doing that, if I trained in the morning, I would eat after, not before, but I would, I would eat right after I would train. And so it would, that would typically mean I would shorten my fasting window, like in the evening or something like that. I I would stop eating sooner, earlier in the day. If I was trying to stick to it, I haven't tracked like when I'm fasting or not fasting a very long time. Um, But I do know I fasted, I've been eating breakfast most of this year, I think all of this year. And, um, I fasted, I think a couple of days ago, it was just one of those more convenience things again. And it's funny how quickly you get hungry again. <laughs> I was like, mm-hmm. Oh man, I'm hungry right now. And I, that was like, I did not experience hunger, um, in the mornings after a certain amount of time, but then it, it came back after just eating for a couple of weeks in the morning. Yeah. I, um, I had to do basically train fasted in Bahrain because I had to work out Right, right when I woke up, I had some coffee and get to going because the gym that I worked out, the outdoor gym closed at 9 a.m. So I had to like start my workout by 7.30 or something. Uh, now here, I'll have the freedom because of the gym and even, you know, I'll have my garage gym and I'm going to push it back a little bit because so I can actually eat in the morning. And I, and I have, you know, bars now. I just have like an RX bar when I first wake up with my coffee and I'm good to go for, after like an hour because that's just something in my body. Um, 
and I still like to do the fasted training once or twice a week. So like, and to circle the back to the study, doing a zone two run, if you listen to a lot of our zone two stuff, it's good for burning fat. If you're fasted, I, I don't need the carbs to burn because I'm staying in that, in that fat burning zone. And they, even in the study, they found after a year, the time restricted feeding window, they saw possible increase in fat for fuel because of like how mm-hmm. they, how they burned it. And fewer and, carbohydrates consumed. Right. Yeah. But, and they're also <laughs> their macro breakdown. They had, they were at like a over 50% carbs and like 22, 23% for fat for calories. While most of our athletes are probably at a above 30% fat for calories, closer to 40 or so for carbs. So like the fat distribution is a bit different. So I think at our, some of our athletes could, you know, if you're doing a zone two day, um, then I think that's a good time to just the easy way to incorporate um, a good fast if you're, if you're if you're doing it in the morning, but every other day, you know, stick to stick to your normal schedule. Maybe have something before you train. Um, it just gets harder when you know some people wake up at five a.m. to train and, and you get into those deals. But you're still, if you have dinner in the evening, you're probably still under thirteen hours of fast after you train and have your protein shake. So it, it kind of depends on the intensity that you're doing. Um, but yeah, that's just how I how I kind of look at it and like to do it as well. <clears throat> And then when, when you do make these changes, I, this is when I start to pay attention to more things like, uh, recovery, sleep. Um, I actually pay attention to my body weight. If I'm like right now I am like, I had, I don't normally weigh myself very often at all, but I I've been weighing myself more regularly now because, uh, I'm probably eating more calories than I have been. I'm like, okay, let's see if I gain, I don't care if I gain, but I'm just interested to see if I do. And right now I'm not gaining at all. Um, which just means I was just under eating, um, Cause if you can, if you can eat more calories and your body's just like, thank you, you are <laughs> under eating. If, you know, if you start to put on weight when you're consistently like whatever, one to two pounds per week, when you're eating, then you're eating too much, you know, cause that's a, that's a trajectory for gaining, uh, you know, eight, 10 pounds a month, uh, consistently. So you might want to slow that train down. Um, so these things, these markers are pretty easy to pay attention to if you're overeating or under eating, um, but you might not be eating enough. I'm going to keep harping on that. Cause I feel like mm. when we're talking to healthy individuals, like we could sit around and talk about weight loss a, a bunch, but there's not much to say about it. Like, I think we all know what you have to do, right. To lose weight. There, there are like three categories. There's move more, eat less. If those aren't working, it's probably hormonal, right? There's, there's something else, a bigger issue going on. And, and those are the three options. There's not much else, you know, there's not, there are not a lot of their options out there, but when it comes to under eating that, I feel like that's happening to a lot of people, um, who are in this healthy category. I know we have a lot of athletes listening to this veteran athletes been training for a long time and, and you get by without eat, having to eat as much, but it might not be good for you. You know, you might experience a whole new version of life once you start eating enough. All right. Anything else on that one, guys? All right. Let's jump into the topic. So we're talking about, the human program. Is that what we're, I officially called it? In doc human program. Yeah. I think you marketed it as the, uh, better human on the, uh, on the podcast. I mean, what was that thing called? Webinar. The webinar. Hmm. Yeah. So we have a, we have a new program being released to, um, garage gym athletes. It'll also be available on garage gym athlete.com. It is called the human program. Um, we're going to talk about kind of what it is, why it exists, and maybe more technicalities of uh, accessing it and whatnot. Uh, do you want to start with that, Joe? Do you want to mention the, the technical parts of getting access to this program? <laughs> How does someone I get the I... program? I think you would know. Um, if they're a member, how do they, how do they, where do they find it? It should be on, it's going to be on the website. I don't know where it's going to be, but it's going to be, we're just going to have like a one the training center, right? Yeah. So, yeah. uh, we're going to have it listed on the, in the training center for uh, current athletes. So if you're a current athlete, not only do you get access to the app, but there's the training center where there's 10 other programs. Well, now there's going to be another program. If you just want to do it in there and you don't want to mess with the team builder app or change your track or anything, you can just go in there. You can even, um, take a look at the program. So that's where it will be for just like right off the bat on the seventh, we're going to have it, um, in the training center. Yeah. And uh, I just want to be clear on that because we actually will be, if you want it in team builder, it's a dollar. And that's logistics on our end. That's also being able to give it to 
uh, friends and family. Uh, there has to be this charge factor. And so that is happening. If you want it in team builder, whether you're a current athlete or new athlete, um, it's a dollar. If you're actually, if you're a new athlete, I don't think it's a dollar. I think we might be charging more than that for new athletes. Um, and so that's how that's going to work. Um, but if you do, you're like, I don't want to pay a dollar. I already pay a monthly fee. I get it. And that's why it's hundred percent for free in your training center account. And you can access mm -hmm. it there at any time. Um, but if you want it in your team builder account, like official track change, all that jazz, it's going to cost a dollar and that'll make you pay attention and do the work. That's the, that's a big thing. And, and if you haven't been around long enough or been around me long enough, I don't like free things. Um, when you pay, you pay attention is the, the little slogan I live by. And it's just so true. Um, and so if this was just another track, I, I feel like it would be abused and not used. Um, even for people who are paying, but I didn't feel like it was right to not give our current members the program while there's, they are paying a monthly fee. So that's why you do get it free in your training center, but team builder will be a dollar. Uh, so that's all the technical side of getting the, the program out of the way. And we will have like a page for people to sign up and everything, um, on the seventh. So if you have like friends or family members who you want to be a part of this or think that it'd be a good indoctrination program for them into garage map, we, you know, share it around and, um, see if you can get them involved. Um, I guess we can go into the overall, what the program is. Uh, and then if you guys just want to hit on any interesting findings or, or what you think of the program or Joe, did you want to cover anything else? Yeah. Yeah. I got just one thing. If, if we set it up right, whenever you, if you do the $1 track change, or if you have a friend that wants to start it and like say next week doesn't work for you, Another reason why it's not a track change is because when you sign up for it, the program will start on the following Monday you start it. So in two weeks, if you say, you know what, now I want to start the indoc, I got, cause I've gotten the first eight weeks of this cycle and I want to do the indoc. Okay. Then it'll start the following Monday versus jumping into the indoc a week late because how the program kind of works, you need to start it from the beginning. You can't really just start it two or three weeks in because it, it, it's on a pretty aggressive linear progression, but it, it, you need to start from the beginning and slowly ramp up. You can't just be like, yeah, I'm just going to pop in and do these last couple weeks. Yeah. Like all our other tracks, you can jump in at any time. Right. And this one is not that way. Mm -hmm. If you jump into week five, day four, you're just going to be in all sorts of pain and confusion. Um, if you didn't progress properly and I've done a lot of these workouts, not all seven weeks. Um, but I was walking myself through some of this during, um, uh, fit weeks over the last year, um, or towards the end of last year, not the, over the whole year. And, um, it, it gets pretty nasty. Some of the energy system training. <laughs> so when I say in doc mm -hmm. program, don't think it's just like this, uh, yeah, we're going to do three sets of 20 push ups a day and then we'll, we'll call it good and do some light stretching and go for a walk. Like it's, it's still a, a garage gym athlete program. Um, so what we have, I'll just break it down. It's, it's seven week program and it's six days a week. And if you are going to go optional, um, I think that was day four. Let me look at here. No day six. So the sixth day was going to be optional. Um, and so that's how that works. And it follows our body geometry format and it starts off. Um, I feel like every time I say something, I have to explain something further. Okay. <laughs> Body geometry is something we developed to keep athletes healthy, safe, optimal. And it looks at different planes of movements. It looks at different muscle contractions. Um, and it, it's just making sure that you're very well-rounded in your movement patterns. And when you do that, you are very much less likely to, to get injured. Like that's just how, um, the body works. And so we're walking you through this progressive pattern, um, week one, day one with, in hopes that if you're an advanced athlete, this is a great reset. It's not a, it's not beneath you. And, and that's what I want everyone to understand. Um, like I said, I've done a lot of this and it's, there's nothing easy about it. You can make it as hard as you want to in your effort, in your intent when you go to do it, but it's a great reset for athletes who've been around for a long time maybe your, your body's just not feeling right. You're like, Hey, I don't know what all the different contractions are or planes of movement, but that sounds nice. Like, let's try, let's try that out for a little bit. It, it will be a little bit like uh, taking vitamins for your body. Uh, and so you, we walk you through that each day. So it's a strength day that walks you through everything I was just talking about with body geometry. 
And then the next day will be a conditioning day. And then the conditioning days, if you do all three, are going to walk you through the three different energy systems. So you're going to do aerobic on the first conditioning day, a lactic on the second conditioning day and lactic, um, on the last day. So that, that last one is the really crappy one. Uh, we like to call it the, the pain <laughs> and, and it's just really terrible. So if you wanted to skip something, that's the one that you should skip. Um, <laughs> uh, cause that's going to be the worst one. And if you're a true beginner into fitness, you should skip it because you're not actually going to benefit from the training. Cause you have to have a certain level of strength to be able to benefit from that energy system being trained. Uh, so that's the breakdown of the program. I could talk about this a lot more, uh, as we get into it, but I don't know thoughts from any of you overall about the program, how you were thinking about using it, how maybe our athletes should use it, uh, anything like that. I think that this is, I think this is great. I think this is a great tool that a lot of people can utilize. Um, I mean, you talked about your, you basically have been trying this out on your brother for a little bit. Um, but I just looking over the, the course of the, just looking at over the next seven, eight weeks of it, it's, it's really well thought out. And I love that you're strengthening your body, um, in just different kind of movements that we typically a grudge gym athlete sometimes don't see, um, and you start without, it's all body weight at first, right? Mm -hmm. um, and kind of really get a feel for your body. So just what Jared said, like, even if you are, have been training for years, I feel like this is a great way to fix imbalances that you have maybe picked up from training, or um, you just want to kind of get back to the basics and kind of see like, oh man, I really should work on X, Y, and Z. Like, I mean, there's even one movement there that I really appreciated where you literally lift your leg and you're going to hold it when just like a one legged hold for a while, you know, and it's, it, it sounds super simple, but you know, you have to do it and squeeze your core. And there's a lot of things that go into these movements. And so I really think it's really well thought out. Um, and I love the supersets. I love that you're able to get in a a lot of work and kind of like almost condensed, but not really. Uh, and then I think it's a really great mix of conditioning with the strength, strength portions. Yeah, I really, I, I love the way it looks. Um, I'm really excited about it for, for people. I'm excited for people to jump into this, um, both new, new people to come in and, and try this out as their kind of their first, uh, taste of garage and athlete. I'm also excited to hear from some of our staff, from our established athletes, from people that are already in our programming who make the jump, go over here and do this and, and kind of get surprised by it. You know what I mean? Because I, th I definitely think there could be, there could be instances where you get in here and you think that it's going to be, you know, I'm glad that I'm glad Jared, that you said, like, don't, don't assume that this is going to be easy for you, you know, just because you've been around for a while, because I, that's just, if you've been around for a while, you know, that that's not how we do things here, <laughs> um, is, is, kind of my point is like you should know that if we're if we're putting something new together um that it's going to be it's it's going to challenge you and so i i really like that um and there's even some things in here that i've never even heard of i don't even know what it is um that so i i might jump in here and and you know try some of this new stuff out like a like a curtsy squat there's there's just a little i saw that written on the on the program every, like, every female is like we've seen I had that to, <laughs> I, had to, I had to look up what that was and I, I didn't know that that was a a squat variation there's a bunch of them out there i guess but yeah so i know you know things in here that even i you know have never heard of and never tried before so it's it's exciting i, I like this and i think it's i think it's going to be a great thing for uh for everybody uh both new people and, and established athletes alike yeah so a little bit more about the program uh so one thing that i i mean i like it because i like more simple um and formulaic it is very formulaic so like Monday, you're going to be doing squats and lower body. Tuesday, you're going to be doing sustain. Wednesday's press and upper body. Thursday's gain. Friday is like a pulling and posterior chain day. And Saturday, sixth day is the pain. Like that's, that's the structure. But each week escalates. Each week, the movements change a little bit. And another important thing to note is that you're kind of self-governing on a lot of these, which makes it good for both new and experienced people. That's why it's good for everyone because there is an element to self-governing as long as you follow along and, and push yourself. So 
those things are important to note, but that's why I love it. Uh, it is seven weeks. Then normally in our normal tracks, we have three weeks and then deload fourth week. This one does not have a deload because you're slowly ramping up from the beginning. So it's just seven weeks straight, slowly uh, increasing from there. And then on the eighth week, you can and should uh, deload after you complete the program. Other important things to note just for our, port, our uh, in experienced athletes, they're not going to be broken down into blocks. So that's something to note. So like, whereas, you know, this superset is one block, this supersets two blocks, whatever it is in our normal tracks, blocks aren't broken down. You can obviously always cap, but that's just another thing to, to note as well. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things that I like because of the, the simplicity of it, the simplicity and effective. And if I had to uh, describe this in three words, it would be that escalated quickly. <laughs> and that's mm. it. Yeah, by week seven, it's... Yeah, it's a serious program at that point. But yeah, a good example of this not being easy or the self-governing uh, factor that you're kind of talking about. When I was experimenting with this, I had a friend come in town. He stayed with us for three days. Very fit individual, squats over 500 pounds, um, fast runner, like just a true athlete. And I was like, hey, will you help me do uh, test some of these workouts uh, while you're here? Um, and he did one day... Um, that I had written and we did lower, lower reps. And it was more still in the body weight phase of it. And I think we were doing like 10 to 12 reps and he finished it. And he was kind of like, I mean, dude, to be honest, I could do like another workout right now. That was not bad at all. And I was like, okay, I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to change, change up too much. And so the next day I was like, I, we try another one. So, you know, same format. I didn't like jump to week seven. I still kept it in the beginning, but then I just increased his reps on everything instead of 10 to 12 to 30. And he was like unbelievably sore the next day, like couldn't yeah. move. And so you, you really can play with this a lot. We mm -hmm. kind of put the rep scheme in the middle of that, but if you need to go down or up, you can make this a lot harder. And if you don't want to have to put your brain into the program at all, you don't have to, like we have sets and reps there for you. But if you are on the more advanced side and you finish day one, week one, and you're like, this is too easy, just do more reps. I know it sounds like simple, but it's like crazy different how it can be when you're doing a single leg eccentric squat to bench 30 times each leg versus you know, 12 times total or something like that. They're, they're very different. Uh, so just know that and going into the program. And if you are a beginner, like, yeah, cap yourself on the reps if it's uh, getting too, too crazy. Um, and then the only other note, Joe said it's not in the blocks. Uh, you're probably going to have to time cap yourself on the energy system training. And that's fine. Like, because I wanted to keep it in true, uh, and this is part of the reason we didn't block them. I want to keep it in true energy system training fashion. And to do that, there are set work and rest ratios in energy system training, like how much work you should be doing and how much rest you, sh you should be doing to truly benefit from energy system training. That's how you should do it. And in garage gym athlete training, we stick to that 95% of the time. Sometimes we shorten those or lengthen them because of trying to stay within those blocks. And so I kind of removed that from my governor on programming here because I wanted to just put it in true energy system fashion. And if you're not accustomed to this, you're going to be sitting around sometimes and you'll be like, I am so like fully recovered. Like I, I can go again. And you might be able to, if you want to make that decision, go for it. But that's the point of energy system training. There's supposed to be like a damn near full 100% recovery between bouts. So you can actually give it your full effort each time, especially when you're in the pain zone, there's a lot of recovery needed in the first couple of weeks. It doesn't really matter. You'll still finish in about an hour, but uh, some of those later sessions towards week seven could take you an hour and a half, but you're not working out truly for an hour and a half. There's like a lot of rest in there. So if you can just do it, how it's written, do it. If you need to time cap yourself, that's fine too. You're still going to get a lot of benefit out of doing multiple sets instead of all of the sets. Uh, but that's probably the last thing I have to say on energy system training. If you want to truly experience pure monostructural energy system training for seven weeks, this is it. And it'll kick your ass. Yeah. Just one more final thing is another reason why it's good for newer people or just things to note is that most of our programs, we like you to have your one rep max is set. And for this, you don't need it. So if nobody has it as a one rep max, you can just jump in. You don't need to do a testing day. You don't need to do anything of that. You just start day one and go.
yeah that's basically it uh february 7th is that today that is today when it releases (laughs) yep (laughs) that is today uh Mm -hmm. so you guys can get access to that now um whether you're a current athlete or wanting to be an athlete prospective athlete you can get involved with that program uh but that's it i'm excited for you guys to to try it out give some feedback and and see how things go so we can mosey on over to the workout today what do we have ashley Dia de los Muertos, so also known as death by. (laughs) Um, You're going to start with 10 meter sprints with a continuously running clock. So at minute one, you're going to do one 10 meter sprint, minute two, two, minute three, three, so on and so forth until you cannot complete the required number of 10 minute sprints within the minute that you're in, right? So you um and then you get five minutes rest and then you do death by push-ups and so minute one you're going to do one push-up minute two two push-ups so on and so forth until you can no longer complete the push-ups in the minute time frame i think thing to note for the push-up is it's also when your form goes right that's i think we would all agree that that's when you need to stop pushing up so tips tricks wine pairings don't mm. do don't do the joe <laughs> on the shuttle sprints <laughs> i think that's just general advice you right be, don't be do efficient. the joe. you can be efficient okay what, what what i don't remember what is it that you do oh I don't on either. the first 10 meter sprint he said don't fully sprint out and he's like in the first uh, couple first like three or four you can just kind of like jaunt across like a little power. So if, if you're in the category, um, or you're one of the athletes who considers your warm up cracking your knuckles, um, yes, mm-hmm. take the Joe approach and use the first couple as your warm up. <laughs> if you actually do a proper warm up, <laughs> then, then go fast starting on the first one. I think the last time too, we said actually do like, like cone style and turn around and try to turn around on different feet. And yeah, so touch the line or, or pivot on uh, your right foot and then the other side pivot on your left. So basically you're kind of staying the same way. You're just turning a little bit as you go. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I'm glad, Ashley, I'm glad you said uh, form on the pushups um, can get, uh, those can get really hairy um, after you've done a whole bunch of them. <laughs> so, you know, we don't need you arch in your back either direction don't round it don't arch it you know like don't that just don't do that keep your core tight and move everything at the same time move everything in one motion um and um and i don't know i don't really know what kind of music to listen to for this maybe do it no music yeah can you do that silent, silent do it do it silently do it with no music Y'all are boring i mean mm. you probably have to have some sort of beep or like you can probably put on there's a ton of like power hour mixes on uh youtube you can just put mm. on a power hour i like that idea a lot better than silence <laughs> <laughs> no concentrate awesome. on what you're doing especially for the push-ups i don't really like do you, do you need music for push-ups i mean i just okay I you just bang I'm them a, out what? you're a boy okay i hate <laughs> push-ups <laughs> i'm sorry I, you know i'm not big on the workout playlist so funny story my my brother and I, he's not really either, but we listen to music. And the only reason I started listening to music is because he came over. And I don't know. He thinks maybe I just want to listen to music. <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, but anyway. Did he mention something to you? No, what's funny is I will just, um, I have one of those like little Alexa mm-hmm. dots in there or whatever. And I'll just say, Alexa, play some good music. Or I'll say, Alexa, play some workout music or like something random, you know? And she plays the worst music on the planet every time, <laughs> 99% of the time. And then I can tell when he doesn't like it. Cause he'll be like, Alexa, play this instead. <laughs> and, uh, mm-hmm. so we'll end up, but Alexa, I don't know if it's my kids or whatever, whatever she thinks my musical preferences are, are He's hilarious. Rich. I'm like, play some good workout music. And she's like, girls, gymnastics playlist now playing. And I'm like, where did you get that? Like what? <laughs> And it's like Katy Perry and like Taylor Swift and all this stuff. So I don't know what to listen to when you exercise, but the last couple of months for me have been rough in that department. I don't, Not I, can't, country I can't help you. During Murph. Let me just tell you that. Country is good. Always. 
Not um, during Murph. Oh. Wait, correction. Texas country. It's oh, always, <laughs> always good. I, I automatically filter that in my head because I have in my head what country music is and what country music isn't. So I understood what you meant and agreed with you. So, so you like Texas country too? Texas country, from <laughs> what I experienced while I was in Texas, seems to be really similar to just what I consider country music. So, um, yeah, it just, it just talks about Texas a lot, but it's country music that talks about Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm cool with that. Like, yeah. Um, I could talk a lot more about music if you guys prefer. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, Let's we should about... save that for a topic and yeah, probably get out of here. Let's see. Well, I haven't given any tips yet. Oh. I've, I've given completely useless <laughs> that, information about Ash, the workout. Ash is like, no, Jared, you're done, man. He's we're, trying to cut out of here. Cut out of here. Um, I, I, I think all tips have been said. Yeah, try to try to switch <laughs> try to switch sides on the on the shuttle. Hmm. Keep good form with the push ups. But my actual tip is try hard on this one. Um, Joe. <laughs> I'm not calling Joe out. I'm just saying I think that it's easy. Mm-hmm. To like to get to the last push up set and be like, there's no way I'm gonna make it. You know, like maybe you got to 18, minute 18, and you're like, you have to do 18 push ups, and you're like, oh, there's no, I'm not gonna do it. So you do like five, right? Absolutely not. Try as hard as you can for those full 60 seconds, fall on the ground, yell, scream, get another push up, like do whatever you have to, get one more push up, and do the same with your running. Uh, don't get into this like, ah, well, it's, physically impossible for me to get there don't don't get in that mindset do it try to get there that's where you actually build yourself up and sometimes i feel like when we do these workouts i have to bring us back to the original point of why they're called meet yourself saturdays right and they're not just another workout they're supposed to you're supposed to meet yourself so if you like barely squeaked out 17 and it took you 60 seconds you immediately go in you're like 18's not happening cool just do try as hard as you possibly can to do as many as you can and not just be like, ah, that minute's over. Um, so that's it. That's my tip there. But we'll get out of here. If you want to be a part of the new program and you are not one of our athletes, uh, go sign up for a membership at garagegymathlete.com. Uh, and then for all of our current athletes, thank you so much for supporting us, listening to the pod- podcast and joining our local meetups that Joe's going to be doing. I think, is it daily? Or oh, you doing those every day? It's not, it's not local either. <laughs> uh, well, they're local to the like Facebook month. group, which is our, <laughs> our real estate on the internet. <laughs> yeah. True. Uh, so you're going to be doing those every day, right? That's what you said? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Ooh, great. Just call me in. If you yeah. can figure it out, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you pop up into his personal Zoom meeting, you're there. Uh, mm-hmm. But those are fun. Join the next one for real. If you're one of our athletes listening to this right now and you made it this far into the podcast, join the next one. You'll really enjoy it. I think it was really cool. Uh, but that's it, guys. If you don't kill comfort, comfort will kill you. To the Garage Gym Athlete podcast. If you want to learn more, go to garagegymathlete.com. You can learn about our training. Let us send you a copy of our book, The Garage Gym Athlete, or you can even get featured on the Garage Gym Athlete podcast. Thanks for listening.